Northwest Music, presented by the Cumberland Hotel. We have live music Wednesdays and Saturday nights with award-winning musicians and a menu offering everything from burgers to ribs, wings, and fish and chips. Welcome to Northwest Music. I'm Mary Ruth Harris. Joining us today, very special guest, Archie Pateman, and of course, co-host Doug Cox, and they are gonna start us off with a song. Hang me, oh, hang me, I'll be dead and gone. Hang me, oh, hang me, I'll be dead and gone. show. Now we are Shaw TV Studios in Campbell River and it is full of some really interesting instruments and of course for me the most interesting is the one you're holding there Doug. What is this that? This thing, this is a, it's a double neck Weisenborn is what you might call it and it was made by a 
Men named uh, Neil Russell and Victoria from Celtic Cross Instruments. Oh, okay. And it's not unusual anymore to have a single neck wizen born, but to have a double neck is real special. And I asked Neil if he could make me one. He said sure. So oh, wow. he made this for me uh, quite some time ago. And it's uh, beautiful. If you know who Ben Harper is, he actually found out about it and ordered one. So oh, really? it's kind of cool because Ben Harper has a copy of my guitar. Oh. So <laughs> quite happy about. But it's a uh, it's an instrument that's made to play on your lap. So right. it's got a hollow neck. Um, right. Both these necks are hollow. They're okay. both just one great big hollow chamber. Wow. And it's really fun because you, the necks are tuned to two different tunings, right? So this is a D and this is a G, and I can slide up to a G in this tuning. Sorry, I can slide up to a D in this tuning. Okay. I can slide to a G in this wow. tuning. So it's kind of fun because you can play with both necks at the Very same time. Very cool. As long as you're sober. <laughs> <laughs> it is beautiful. Now, what are, what are you holding there, Archie? Uh, this is a Murfitt guitar. Uh, a good friend of mine, Warren Murfitt, in Vancouver makes these. Okay. And uh, it's yeah. very pretty. Oh, I love it. You know, it's a, just a fantastic guitar. Warren's a good friend of mine, and I always sat in his uh, in his kitchen, and I would gravitate to this car, this guitar in particular. Uh, he has. He has a bunch of them. He makes beautiful parlor guitars as well, like the smaller body guitars. Yeah. Uh, his specialty, though, I think, is the dreadnought. And uh, very nice. He, he specializes in just keeping it really simple but very toneful. So I'd always mm -hmm. gravitate to this particular guitar. So finally, yeah. we came up with a deal where I walked away with it. So is he a is he a disciple of Larave or of Michael Dunn? Or no, the other? No, no, he's not. He's uh, uh, for the most part self-taught. He, he's a cabinet maker, so he's really proficient uh, with woodworking mm. uh, to begin with. And then he forayed into the world of uh, luthier and guitar making, and he's been at it for at least a decade. Nice. Uh, making really nice stuff. Awesome. Yeah. Now, um, how old were you when you picked up your first guitar? Guitar, maybe eight or nine, I think. Um, I started on the mandolin, or no, I started on the fiddle, actually, when oh, I was okay. really young, oh. uh, like five years old. And uh, awesome. I played that for a couple years, and mm -hmm. I was having trouble Jam I just wanted to play with my dad and my uncles and my aunts and yeah. a very musical family and I couldn't, I wasn't really equipped with the tools on the fiddle to do that okay. and so my father taught me how to play the mandolin and then all of a sudden I could be part of the action. I could, instead of just practicing the scales or the particular songs I was learning on fiddle, all of a sudden I had a vehicle to be part of the action with the mandolin and Great. my fingers were little, I was a little guy and uh, so I could watch my dad's fingers on his guitar and translate that to my mandolin chords. And then cool. It wasn't until I was maybe yeah, nine or 10 that I realized through watching my dad's fingers that I probably could figure out the guitar because I knew where the chords were. And right. so it didn't take me long to get into the guitar. And then in my 20s, it was the banjo and stand-up bass and awesome. all that kind of stuff later on. Now, have you always been a part of a, a family group or how did your musical career evolve? No, I was uh, I was always drawn to music and passionate about it since I can remember. Uh, I think through my dad's love of it, uh, it sort of just uh, you know poured off onto me. And my first band was in high school. We got in a rock band, and then all of a sudden it was like this pass into bars when we weren't even old enough. So it was you know <laughs> the ticket to get in. So that was really fun. And uh, as I grew older, I was really drawn towards more old time, old time folk and bluegrass kind of music. Okay. And uh, my first professional band was uh, the Breakman. I founded, uh, I was one of the founders of the Breakman out of Vancouver in 2004. Yeah, awesome. And we toured uh, professionally for six years mm. and are still great friends, but we don't, uh, we live far away from each other now, so it's harder <laughs> for us to, to play, but we sure love it when we get a chance. You guys kind of burned out. On the road after a while, didn't you? Like, didn't you? Didn't you tour really hard and heavy for a few no, years? No, not really. I mean, okay, what we did is had kids. Uh, oh, it wasn't okay. a burnout <laughs> factor. I mean, we always toured uh, a reasonable amount. We certainly toured enough to to work on our profile and become known. Uh, uh, at least that was our goal, and uh, build a bit of an audience. But we never really toured to the point of burnout. We all took care of ourselves on the road, and, oh, and okay. we were all really great friends. So. That wasn't a big deal. It was just uh, within one year, I think we had five kids or something like that between wow. us. You oh, wow. know, uh, maybe that's an exaggeration. It was three kids in one year, but anyways, it was uh, <laughs> lots of kids that all of a sudden, all of a sudden, life took over, and we just didn't want to be on the road. Yeah, uh, we wanted to be with our little people. So, so do you still have uh, hopes to bring the Breakman back together? And I think one day. I mean, we're all like I said, we're all uh, still great friends, and certainly when we have a chance, we'll play music. Uh, 
it'd be amazing to do that. Um, since I moved to Cumberland, though, I started another project uh, called the Cumberland Brothers, uh, and we toured for uh, two years and okay. uh, cut an album. Uh, and again, I came to the same answer, the same conclusion that I just didn't want to be away from my family just yet. Mm -hmm. So I think that as far as I'm concerned, all paths lead back to music. Uh, but for now, my kids need me at home, so I'm going to awesome. stay in Cumberland for a while. Yeah, yeah. Did you, um, how old were you when you moved into, you know, writing some of your own songs? When did that sort of click for you? I was pretty young. Uh, you? That was uh, one of my first real passions within music was, uh, was writing, you know, so 15, 16, I cut my first, you know, little EP in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, a four song demo when I was 16. Oh, great. And, uh, and I got the opportunity to record uh, another little demo in Nashville when I was uh, getting a bit older, I think 22 or something like that. Uh -huh. And uh, so songwriting was always my, the, the reason why I was doing it. Like everything else was a vehicle for the songs that I was writing. Oh, cool. So I never really, never really put the time in to be the most proficient picker or, uh, uh, you know, the most knowledgeable, say with scales and things like mm -hmm. that, musician. It was always about the song for me and that's what I was in pursuit of. Okay, cool. Um, What's your yeah. favorite thing about performing in front of an audience? Well, I, I think the connection, I mean, without a doubt. I think when you can connect with people and and find a way to be on the same channel together, I think that's what it's all about. Um, you know, talking to their hearts and feeling back from them that, that you that, that you're resonating with them, and uh, you can really feel that as a performer when you when you're when you're resonating with people and when you're and when they're with you in a song, uh, it's a totally different feeling than when you're playing at people. And so I think that's that's what I'm right. always looking for is that connection. Okay. Mm -hmm. How about you, Doug? Sorry, like, I, was, I was listening. To, <laughs> I forgot the question. I was listening to the answer. <laughs> um, what's your favorite thing about performing in front of an audience, and instead, as opposed to working in the studio? Um, the live music connection that happens on stage between the the players is. Oh, okay is what I love. I mean, I love to connect with an audience too. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, it's more, it's more about what's happening between players on stage. I love to collaborate with other players. Although when I'm singing a song, like when I'm leading a song, it's definitely that feeling of connecting with the, with the audience more than with the players, you know. Okay. But I spend most of my time now as a, kind of as a side guy or a, or a co-side guy. And, uh, yeah. and I love what happens when, when that clicks, especially. Right. Now, um, you mentioned Cumberland, which is where you are now settled, and we are surrounded in the studio by these big, beautiful Cumberland crates. Do you know anything about that? I've heard of these guys. I don't know how you're supposed to make a living making boxes. <laughs> From banjo to box building. <laughs> Well, how did this idea come up? Are, it's just, they are beautiful. They're spectacular, but where did the idea come from? It came from my partner, Roderick Lane. Okay. Uh, he, him and I are old friends, which we planted together. Uh, that's another part of my history. <laughs> uh, 17 years on tree planting blocks. Uh, wow. Long season, so that's a big part of my makeup. Uh, big part of my ambition to not be on a block again. So I, I think that's where a lot of my hard work ethic comes from. Uh, is from those years of tree planting. Him and I did a lot together and we were looking for a way out essentially. We were looking for a way to again stay in Cumberland and uh, stay closer to home and not have to do that seasonal work. Uh, which I always did through my musician years too. I always went out and did a couple months in the in the bush to, you know, I didn't accept the starving artist gig so I always kept that going and so Rod came one day and said, you know, he, he was farming at the time and he had this farmer market stall in Courtney and he said, you know, no one's got wooden boxes anymore. Everyone's got these plastic totes. We should make wooden boxes. And I said, yeah, great idea. And uh, just sort of passed it off. And he said, no, I mean, we really should make these wooden boxes. And I said, well, there's probably a reason why there's not a wooden box company, <laughs> you know, <laughs> happening right now. I don't know if the, the numbers are going to work out on that. And he said, well, let's, let's just, you know, can you make me 10? Can we make 10 together and, and for my market at least? And so we made him 10. Uh, he picked up some materials and bought me a router to add to the other rudimentary tours, tools that I had in my shop at the time. I had a wood shop, in, or I had a storage shop in Cumberland. Yeah. And uh, so we made these 10 and of course somebody wanted to buy them and then we made 10 more. And, and then I thought, you know, maybe this is going to work okay and maybe he's not so crazy after all. And I put an ad in Craigslist uh, and, you know, got four or five responses and it became obvious that okay there's a market here 
And so that was in August of 2013. And so in September, instead of going tree planting, uh, we designed seven or eight styles of box with some functionality like holding wine bottles or holding uh, LPs uh, or standard farm apple boxes and things like that. Right. Built a website with some nice photos <coughs> of these and, uh, and launched it. And by the end of you know, September, we had orders. And then Christmas rush came and we were hiring our friends to help us build this and trying to source material and figure out how to, you know, how to do it because neither of us were really, uh, you know, a carpenter. Right. You know, I think we both, you know, sort of had general skills, but, but we weren't, you know, fine woodworkers by any means. So, uh, so we launched the company, hired our friends, and by Christmas we thought, wow, this is, this is going to... And then we just put our shoulders to the wheel in 2014 and uh, dropped everything else and made a go of it. Just decided the two of us that we were gonna try our hardest to make that work. And we had a couple lucky breaks with some multinational companies that started ordering uh, high unit volumes. And, uh, wow. and what were they using them for? The uh, merchandising display oh, okay. in their store. So, cool. so Lush Cosmetics uh, was our first big Client. So wow. did you put their stamp on those? They didn't want it. They, we actually still have our stamp wow, on the inside great. of each. Really? So all the way across North America, those stores are stacked wall to wall with our, with our custom boxes and a lot of our signature fabulous. boxes, and it's our logo on the inside. Fantastic. So wow. it's quite what fantastic. A great but we story. often do uh, custom logos and branding. Uh, we do that all the time. Now we have you know two or three hundred corporate contacts that we make boxes for and. Uh, we're lucky with a couple of these multinationals and then somewhere around 50 retail stores that, that sell our, our crates. And Fabulous. Yeah, so. What a great, and we couldn't be happier because here at Northwest Music, Cumberland Crate Company is now one of our sponsors. Oh, yeah, and we're happy to be that. We're, uh, we're glad you guys are doing this and happy yeah. to be a part of it. Have you made any cajones yet? No, no, <laughs> not yet. Maybe, maybe you could make us a cajon for the show. Okay, a yeah. crate sure. Company cajon. Well, we you? don't say no to anything. So <laughs> we, just, we just talk dollars. We don't say no to anything. Okay. All right. The answer is always yes. A Cumberland Crate Company. First. All right. Well, speaking of the answer is always yes. How about another song? Yes. There you go. See how easy that was. I'm going to play you a song called You're My Sunshine, not to be confused with You Are My Sunshine. There's an apostrophe in this one. That's how I, that's how I own it. Uh, we recorded this one on the Cumberland Brothers uh, Gamey album uh, from 2015 or 16. Um, yeah. And it's in the key of C, I think. Okay. <laughs> Sensitive and kind, you just go with the flow. And that's what you need. Tell me all the time, so now I know you're a sparrow. Singing your sweet songs from up there on the roof. You're taking a dust bath. You don't look too good when I come to you. I'm a big old bumblebee, and you are a honeysuckle blossom. Sweet nectar of summer, calling me. I'm drawn. by the grand design When I look up You're my sunshine Your storm front Lying and crashing You are thundercloud Electricity my arms and down my back You are a downpour And all of that stillness that ensues 
Jesus And when the clouds clear You are blue sky too I'm a big old bumble bee And you are a honeysuckle blossom Sweet nectar of summer calling me I'm drawn here by nature, by accident Here by the grand design When I look up You're my sunshine When I look up You're my sunshine It makes me feel like I want to be under a maple tree in a backyard with a nice big glass of lemonade. Nice. <laughs> That's how that song made me feel. It's a nice now, place to be. It is, isn't it? Now, you're watching Northwest Music on Shaw TV. We are here in the Campbell River Studios. We are going to be right back. We're going to do an instrument swap around, so stay right where we are. There's more music on its way. On Dunsmuir Avenue in Cumberland is the Cumberland Hotel. And every Wednesday night is an acoustic night with award-winning musicians, Doug Cox, and friends. Delicious food, pool tables, darts, and music. Now, back to Northwest Music with Mary Ruth Harris and Doug Cox. Welcome back to Northwest Music. I'm Mary Ruth Harris. We are here at the Shaw TV Studios in Campbell River. And Archie Pateman is our guest along with my co-host, Doug Cox and they have another musical interlude for you. Thank you. 
You guys have successfully transported me back to my 10-year-old self watching Hee Haw with Roy Clark and Buck Owens. Do you remember his three-color guitar he had? The blue, white, and red guitar? Oh, yeah. oh that is awesome. And Doug, that's not a dobro. Oh, my God. <laughs> that's a guitar. That's, I think that's the first time I've ever seen you play a guitar. Really? Yeah. Why do you think I have all these guitars for? <laughs> <laughs> well, I knew you had them, but I knew you played the mandolin and the, and the dobro, but I haven't actually seen you play the guitar. Really? Really. Well, there you go. I, like, I love to play the guitar. One of the, one of the things I enjoy about Archie playing is that he likes to play many different instruments too. So mm -hmm. the, the couple of rare times that we've gotten together to play, it's just been like a constantly handoff of instruments. That's so, awesome. Uh, Neither, yeah. of us, neither of us are too afraid of making uh, mistakes. Yeah. So we're no, not, we're not uh, scared of the train wreck. So, so how about this one? Why don't you oh, play this one? What better time to play something I never play than now I you, So now you know how to play dobro as well, and banjo and guitar. Well, okay, is there anything you dobro, don't play? I would, say I, I would say I tinker on the dobro <laughs> at best. And, uh, do you and tinker I, or do you dabble? I dabble <laughs> a little, I tinker a little, and uh, I'm going to do my best to... <laughs> So a shake Doug song up here. <coughs> but I'm, what what I do have going for me is that I, if in doubt, play less. Yeah. <laughs> or, or so, are, so you two are now going to play another song. You're going to stay on guitar, but this time you're going to sing. I'm going to sing a song, yeah. Oh, okay. Because Archie this wanted to, uh, to play the dobro. Well, I mean, oh, yeah. it's a first for us. This is the first time on Northwest Music you've actually I've actually sang. That's right. That's as true. the lead, yeah. Yeah. Like, Archie, we've had some really amazing guests here on Northwest Music, and you are one in a growing line. We've had Bill Bourne. Oh, amazing. And Jim Burns and Drew Gonzalez from Kobo Town. And then in uh, in July, we ran an actually we ran a documentary created by Strong Heart Productions, who behind that is Cameron Dennison um, from Tough Radio in Tofino, mm -hmm. and he did a documentary on Vancouver Island Music Fest. So that coincided. So we showed that as part, of, and I got to interview Doug for the other twenty minutes. Cool. It was just digging. Great. So all right. So what song are you guys gonna play? This is called Rains on Me. <gasps> Oh, it's, one it's, of my a, it's a wonderful Willie P. Bennett song. Mm -hmm. um, it was a dear friend and uh, featuring Archie Payton of Cumberland Crate Company <laughs> on Doug's Dobro. On my Dobro. Right. Which I should mention is another instrument made in BC. Oh, really? Um, by a company called Rako Resophonics mm -hmm. out of Smithers, BC. Oh, cool. And that's my signature model. Mm -hmm. um, usually, Dobros are louder and brighter than that one. Uh -huh. I wanted one that was quieter and darker, just because I, I play with a lot of songwriters. So right. tried to get one. And this guitar was made in BC as well by a company called Tinker Guitars out of Vancouver. So we have okay. a, lot of, a lot of BC. So wood when you here. say this is your signature, so this one is actually named after you? Yeah, you created I helped design oh. that one. And uh, Excellent. we talked about what I was looking for specifically. And uh, Reikos are usually, most modern Dobros are super loud and yeah. bright because they're. Uh, they're bluegrass weapons. Right. So they have weapons. to compete with banjos and those kinds of things. <laughs> Interesting story. Uh, so Mark, who makes Rayco, uh, lived, uh, maybe still lives up in Smithers. He does? Yes, sir. Uh, with Jenny Lester at that time anyways. Uh, I'm not sure if they're still in that. Unfortunately, they're not oh, okay, together okay. anymore. But. Um, at the time, my very first tour that I ever did uh, was with a band we put together called Archie Pateman and the Boot Screefers. And we came right after the end of a planting contract, and we went up and we had gigs like Atlan Folk Festival and uh, Dawson City gigs. We did a tour of the Yukon. Kind of the end of the road tour. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, with three of us. And Mark and Jenny lent us their van as wow. part of our, because there was actually, there's three band members and then a bit of an entourage. And we stopped there to jam with them on the way up. And they said, take this camperized van. So our first tour of the Yukon was uh, with Mark and Jenny's nice, camperized nice. van. Cool. That's that's folky. That's pretty folky. Yeah. <laughs> I was love it. it. Was I it a Volkswagen? Tours. It was, no, it's van? a big camperized, uh, I don't know, what, okay. GMC or something like that. Great nice. big thing, yeah. Awesome. It's pretty amazing thing to pass. To just I, just, give to I some... just last week was teaching at a guitar camp with Mark up in Smithers. Oh, cool. Um, a beautiful guitar camp up there. And yeah. For folks who don't know, there's these guitar camps that happen every summer and everywhere all over the world, actually. And they, they're usually held in what are normally Bible camps. Mm -hmm. And they're closed camps on lakes. So you mm -hmm. show up and for 
an entire week people just sit around and play and eat basically. I saw that photograph of you from the last one you did and it was like it was almost like a barn setting and you guys were sitting oh, around yeah, and, the, and the whole there. wall pretty, was open pretty and incredible. the yeah. lake was open behind you it was gorgeous yeah just a stunning place to be playing music yeah man. And nimble and fingers is going on right now actually that's in right. sorrento yeah, yeah in sorrento. two weeks of uh, oh, bluegrass yeah. Yeah, and then I'm off to Alaska next week to teach at Acoustic Alaska. Cool, cool. So it's a pretty, it's a pretty sweet way to spend your summer. You know, when you're in the music business, it's yeah, it's nice to get out of the business and just hang out with people that want to play. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah. So let's pretend we're there now. Let's pretend we're on a lake. Rainy days, I don't seem to care. People talk to me when I'm not there. A vacant lot with a fancy view. I need to talk, but I can't find my shoe. It's on me. It rains on me. It's on me. It rains on me. It rains, it rains, it rains. falls down like gypsy tears as if to wash away all these years and clouds hang low as if to stare at me not going anywhere on me It's on me It rains on me It rains, it rains, it rains
I hear there's jet planes up above the clouds. Rainbows if you're not too proud. And still the rain falls through the ocean breeze. I have to laugh when it plays this joke on me. It's on me. It rains on me. It's on me. It rains on me. It rains, it rains, it rains. time favorites isn't it yeah well willie p bennett was a pretty special pretty special man and one of mm -hmm. our greatest greatest songwriters for sure and uh we need to keep playing his songs i think getting his songs out there it's nice to hear that dobro too being played by somebody else <laughs> yeah well, yeah it's a rare treat to play it but yeah it's especially nice to be playing on a willie p song i uh, share the sentiments there he's a he's a canadian gem he was absolutely now don't you have a little story about that uh, well, when we were playing in Nanson, Alberta with the Brakeman in 2000, and I want to say eight or something like that, we got to play, we got to hang out with Willie P when he was touring with the Fred Eaglesmith band. Uh, we were all playing there one weekend, and I got to sit beside him as we all jammed one night after our show. Uh, another band called the D Rangers from Winnipeg was there, and we all just sat around a big circle and jammed. And Willie P wasn't known to jam that often, and he was definitely a hero of all of ours in the Breakman. And, uh, and so it was really special, and it was really cool. Every time he went to take a, a lead, uh, when you're jamming instruments, uh, taking a break, you know, is when you take a, you play your, your, your lead part solo, he would stand up with his mandolin. You know, and, and just lay it down with authority and then sit back down. And we all, you know, ab you know abided by that authority. We're like, yes, that's what he's doing. And every time he picked a song, he played one of his own songs in the jam. Yeah. Which is another thing that doesn't happen in jams. You don't generally play your own songs. But he was Willie P, and we all knew the song. So yeah. it just made it all the more special. I have a, I have a Willie story. Um, I met him when I, when I was living in Edmonton. Would have been around 1980. And uh, I lived in this kind of yuppie apartment building called... Um, Jasper Towers, Jasper Place Towers, which was on the it north end of Jasper yucky. Place. Well, it was, and there was these two big orange apartment buildings with a, like a yuppie complex in the middle that had <laughs> exercise and tennis rooms and swimming pool and hot tubs and private bar and all that stuff, and you had to be a member of, or you yeah. had to live there to go into this place, right? Oh, wow. It just so happened that I lived there, um, and it was right behind the football stadium where the Edmonton Eskimos played. So there was a bunch of Eskimos that lived in this place as well, the football players. So yes. um, Willie and I were down in the steam room one day, and this was when we both had really long, ridiculously long <laughs> 70s hair, right? And we're sitting in there, and all of a sudden all these great big football players come in, and they sit down by us, and they go, <clears throat> you know, <laughs> like tell us, like, what are you doing here? And Willie throws his head back, and he just kind of goes, and the whole room just started to shake and reverberate because he had this amazing bass voice. And I yeah. thought, okay, we're dead now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> anyways, the football players all got so freaked out, they all got up and went running out of the room. Oh, really? Oh, that's funny. <laughs> that's the kind of guy he was. He yeah. was, uh, he, and he was a big guy, too. Yeah. 
I did. I also got to uh, do a, I was a musical director of a radio show called Rupert's. Mm -hmm. Sorry, the, the, um, oh, the, the Rupert Rocket, which was the train that ran from Jasper to Prince Rupert. We did a radio special for Bill Richardson for Richardson's Roundup. And oh, I got okay, to be yes. the musical director. And it was uh, Willie and Fred and the band and, and Ron Cassette, who's another great musician, who mm -hmm. stopped us. And we recorded on the train from Jasper to Prince Rupert cool. and back. Oh, neat. And that was really fun. I bet it was. Willie was yeah. a blast to hang out with at that point in time, too. Yeah. But every time we recorded, we, we fell into the rhythm of the train. Right. right. We yeah. couldn't break out of it, right? Yeah. So every song sort of ended up in the same tempo. <laughs> that's great. Well, that's all right. Yeah. Really fun. Speaking of tempo, we have to keep on ours. You're watching Northwest Music. We are coming to you from Shaw TV Studios in Campbell River. Doug Cox, Archie Pateman, and myself, Mary Ruth Harris, we will be back after this short break. The Cumberland Hotel on Dunsmuir Avenue in Cumberland has live music with a different band every Saturday night. Variety is the spice of life. A half rack of ribs, six wings, a baked potato, and a salad. Now back to Northwest Music with Mary Ruth Harris and Doug Cox. Welcome back to Northwest Music. I'm Mary Ruth Harris. We are here at the Shaw TV studios in Campbell River and with us Archie Pateman who's going to play for us another amazing song. Well thank you. This is one called Just to Hold On To You and I've never actually recorded this song so this will be documenting it. And I've been lower than some I've been higher than most and I up in the heaven but all I saw there was ghosts and all the times that I seem too good to be true you were right I was trying just to hold on to you I stumbled across town just to knock on your door in places that I know that you don't live anymore and I see your reflection in all that I do but I don't mind as I'm trying just to hold on to you and I hold on to the memory of a hot summer's day and I hold on to the sweet words that you used to say I hold on to fold all you sit and so close to me you know I'm always in pieces no new love is true every day I'm trying just to hold on to you and all these tears that fall out of my eyes when I cry wash over my broken heart all the time and the years that pass by well all that they do is cancel out make me weaker as I hold on to you I hold on to say I hold on to a photo of you sitting so close to me you know I'm always in pieces no new love is true every day I'm trying just to hold on to you you know I'm always in pieces and all new love is true and every day I'm trying just to hold on to you yeah oh, <laughs> why didn't I, I you ever record that? angst there That's at the end of that song it was so soft I just needed to end it with a real big bang. little country angst <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry? why didn't you ever record that? 
I just haven't gotten to it. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, I, I have been focusing on building this business and raising these kids. I have a six and a seven year old that uh, are the most important things in the world to me and that's what mm. I've been focusing on. Awesome. Well, beautiful song. Thank you. You should record it. I think I will one day. Yeah. I just did, as it turns out. Yes, so that, you that works. Did. Have you got lots of songs in the can that you've written since you stopped being really active? I've got it. I'm getting close to an album worth. Nice. Yeah, and I, I do intend to record them and to sort of get back on the saddle uh, when, awesome. those, when those kids get sick of me. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now, how do your kids react to you playing? Like, what was like the first thing that your child said to you when he realized that you were going to play music all the time? No more banjo. No more banjo. That's what Clyde That's says. What he my said. six year old. Uh, <laughs> they react really well. I mean, music is, it's, uh, it's in them. We play yeah. all the time at home. Okay. We're, we're sitting around the three of us, uh, always playing. Clyde, my six year old, uh, sings, and the house is always full of his songs. And, awesome. uh, and Owen's a real natural. And uh, so, yeah, music's a huge part of our life. And, and it always was, uh, you know, being passed down from my father, so I don't mm -hmm. intend to to let that uh, slow down at all. So. How about you, Doug? You've got a few kids. Yeah, I have, I, have, I have four kids, and two of them really love music, and two of them don't really care about music that much. I mean, they like to listen to music, yeah. but they're into other things. And, and did they uh, ever have an opinion about your... Oh, yeah, they have lots of opinions. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> sometimes they really like what I do. Sometimes they, they don't like it at all. Um, they, they, they don't always understand when I'm practicing that. That, that doesn't mean that I'm not doing anything. Mm. I'm sitting in there playing and playing and playing. <clears throat> but they're right. generally very tolerant and supportive and uh, interested. I mean, my kids are also surrounded by, by Vancouver Island Music Fest and have been all their lives. So right. I remember my, my oldest daughter, um, when she was, I, I don't know how old she was, but she was young enough that it was really cute, asked me one time. She said, Daddy, does everybody have their own festival? <laughs> Aww. Aww. <laughs> that was really, That's really very cool, cute. you know, <clears throat> kind of funny. Yeah, but the kids are kids are brutally honest, and I think no matter what you do, they're going to find their own thing as well. Yes. My, my son is uh, twelve, and since he was about nine, he's composed his own music on the computer. He oh. kind of takes samples and turns them into soundtrack things. And, yeah created his own uh, his own Facebook page and all that, or, or YouTube channel and oh, all cool. that kind of stuff. It's all kind right. of cool. Yeah. Well, we are getting very near to the end of this show, sadly. So I understand you two have a little song that you're going to play to take us out. Sure. We're going to change instruments, though. Well, are I was you? just thinking, okay. Doug, we were just talking about kids. I wrote a song for my son before he was born. Key a G, kind of a rocker, kind of a faster number. Let's do number. that. You want to do that? Absolutely. All right. Yeah, I'll, I'll you play whatever you want. I'm program. sure you'll find that. All right. So while he's swooping out his uh, uh, instrument, I'm just going to tell you, you've been watching Northwest Music. I'm Mary Ruth Harris. We have been here with Doug Cox and Archie Pateman, and it has been so much fun. And I'm proud to say that Archie's company, Cumberland, Cumberland Crate Company. I always want to put the crate first. Crate. Anyway, oh, yeah. the Cumberland Crate Company has come on as a sponsor of Northwest Music, and these are the crates behind us. Aren't they amazing? Oh, they're so lovely and strong. And we needed them to hold up all of Doug's guitars. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so thank you, Archie, for coming on as a sponsor. It's, it's great a total to have pleasure. You. Thank you guys for, for doing the show. I think Thanks for playing, thing. too. Yeah. It's great to hear you playing. Well, it's great to be playing again. Nice look, to look forward to, to having you come back to the fold. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> I wrote this song for my yet-to-be-born son. Uh, I was thinking to myself, as a father, what will I say to this kid? Said to my boy, look higher than the stars, and he said, I don't know what you mean. Well, they might be playing hockey somewhere up in Mars on some crazy alien team. We could build a go-kart faster than a bike, Find ourselves a big hill to ride And we call it El Dorado Or any other name you won't see as we're flying by Take what's yours and nothing more Treat your lovers right and be kind Look for good in everyone But be aware of what you find
said to my son, look deeper than the skin, and he said, I don't know what you mean. Are some people's souls hide deep within? Some people ain't what they see. When your heart breaks, pick it up and go. Don't just stand there looking scared. It'll likely break again, you know, and again you'll be standing there. Take what's yours and nothing you find. I look for good in everyone, but beware who you find. West Music, presented by the Cumberland Hotel, located on Dunsmuir Avenue in Cumberland. They have live music every Wednesday and Saturday, pool tables, darts, and a menu with everything from chicken to burgers to fish and chips to ribs and wings. Thank you for watching Northwest Music.